hands that shaped a life now shake and strain against the mortar each break a weight unknown a mason's sharp track his weakened frame and with each trembling heave the old man's fear has grown how amazing and pragmatically these lines are put i mean i know we all love to delve in poems and thus today i am here i am your host for the evening avni katakkar from story scrapers and we are so happy to welcome you all after a long gap and we are back yet again with a very interesting uh, session with our uh, very interesting author because you can guess it out from the lines that i have read which are very poignant um, very pragmatic and interesting so who's the author these lines belong to whom so he is uh, mr mukesh sharma he is a lecturer in english with the government of rajasthan where he has dedicated his career to enlightening students how inspiring it is and as an ardent reader and voracious consumer of text from a from a broad spectrum of genres he is someone who has certainly developed his love for poems from that and then with that this deep seated love for literature informs his poetic endeavors and thus we are here today to talk about his book war heroes and other observations so let us all welcome mr mukesh sharma thank you avni uh, thank you story scapers for inviting me over here and uh, that was really very kind of you um, because because you know we poets are not often uh, very habitual of uh, uh, listening praises or you know? nobody likes to heap praises on us and uh, as the saying goes uh, uh, don't uh, you know even talk to a poet because he'll bore you so uh, although things are changing uh, for the for the last yeah, few years actually, i believe poets are not habituated of taking compliments because they themselves uh, compliment others usually yes yeah because you know uh, poets are you know keen observers i think without being a keen observer you cannot be a poet uh, because you know uh, i guess uh, mukesh ji's network is there some technical issue mukesh ji can you hear me yeah uh, i i i think there was some issue of yeah, uh, not an issue it happened am i audible and visible yeah yeah very clear avni yeah 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 you are very clear uh, am i audible uh, yes, avni yes, now yes. Yes. Okay, so thank you. thank you again. So you were saying something, and you said that poets are um, very keen observers, and that's how they write. So that is genuinely true. And uh, we would like to know about you because uh, whatever I have read about you, um, you are a lecturer. But like, we would like to know more about you. How did you get into the world of poems or? your um, love for writing how did it start actually it's 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 a very interesting story actually kind of unbelievable story um, i think i was not uh, supposed to be a poet earlier um, uh, it will take me 2 minutes to answer you know, because this is a, a short story actually um, uh, it was in uh, uh, 1999 okay and i was in 12th grade and uh, i was so popular uh, due to my cultural activity participation i sang songs and i you know uh, participated in every program in school and uh, even to the extent that my you know cultural activity teachers started uh, telling me that you guide other students okay uh, so that we can save time so for such a person who you know was guiding other people other students uh, there was a day of shame actually and uh, it was on 15th of august and uh, me and my cousin who was also my friend navneet uh, we were supposed to sing a song 
and uh, i i quite remember the song as well suno gor se duniya walon bure nazar na hum pe dalo and something like that so what happened we 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 had a heated conversation just before uh, we were to perform and uh, because of that heated conversation we were not able to perform oh. now i was really for, uh, as far as uh, i am concerned i was really ashamed because it was our last year at the school we were in 12th grade and uh, it was supposed to be our last performance as well and it was so bad that i was ashamed but there comes a ray of hope uh, we had a ma'am of hindi literature i uh, really admire her her name was pushpa pande and she told me that mukesh you don't to, uh, don't have to be ashamed you are so brilliant and talented uh, i didn't believe that uh, so uh, she told me that you are going to perform tomorrow on uh, stage in the prayer but the condition is that you have to write a poem of your own so you have you will write a poem and you will perform it so i took it as a challenge and uh, wrote my first poem on 16th of august uh, so sorry on 15th of august uh, 1999 so that was uh, yeah i got the opportunity uh, although the poem was uh, somewhat childish uh, yet it gave me a start i needed uh, so then it became my passion uh, i i started writing in hindi first and i still write in hindi uh, but then i studied english literature in my graduate post graduate then i had mphil then i uh, enrolled in phd i did net so everywhere there was net i taught uh, to the students of national eligibility test for around 11 years say so literature is you know in it, it is deep rooted in me so i started writing in english okay. so this was my you know journey of writing my first poem okay. so it started at a very early age yeah yeah and when now when you you have started writing like uh, i know teaching is a uh, such a such a big task though most of the times it does not get the glamour and the gratefulness that it deserves but it is a huge thing and then managing uh, following your passion writing poems along with working is again a task so yes. how does it go how do your poems develop amidst of all this thing uh first of all uh, avni uh, uh, let me um, clear you on one thing that if you consider these two things to be two different jobs like teaching is one job and writing is another job then it will be difficult for you to manage but if you start believing that whatever you doing is your job like if i am teaching this is my job if i am writing this is my job and uh, if this is my job definitely i should have the courage or what should we call a gen z called guts to 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 write to do the thing um, uh, that i like most so when i am teaching often i get students whose fathers are like uh, the the lines that you read in the beginning of the introduction uh, these lines were from um, uh, you know um, a poem that i write on uh, that i wrote on a uh, student's father actually he oh, told I me to, i love those lines they are so natural they go like you can feel the words you can imagine that that person in front of you now that is the power of uh, words we can say but for those words to appear on those pages pages that you are reading there should be uh, an inspiration there should be a story there should be uh, either an observation or a story teller in front of you there there can be only two ways okay so either you observe things by yourself or there is a story teller in your life who tells you story in such a nice way that uh, words automatically come like i told you there was a student who told me about his father like his father was a mason and uh, he is now old so he is not able to fulfill his needs he, he can't buy a notebook that i asked them to buy so i usually you know call these kind of students alone in my staff room because i don't want uh, them to share their misery or their i i shouldn't be using that word sorry uh, no no right all of the students so they tell me sometimes it happens that poems come out of those things so 
you know teaching and writing uh, are now both one for me writing is teaching and teaching is writing this is so wonderful i can tell you how happy i am feeling while talking to you because this is something that i have heard rarely from someone uh, that pleasure is actually professional passion comes together it comes out this beautifully through poems yes yes of course it it comes it comes otherwise uh, there is one more thing. otherwise yes. there is one more thing i would like to add uh these kind of things uh, if only said are uh, and not done uh, seem very hollow you have to give time as well so uh, i i am by my society i am considered an introvert because uh, uh, i've been here for the last 5 years in my own town and uh, most of the people say that uh, th there is no difference between you staying in jaipur and you staying in jaisalmer because they don't usually see me around i spend 4 to 5 hours every day on either writing educational books or pursuing my own love for poetry or um, writing oh. so you are delving in your own world of words and poems yes yes i am own i have my own world i have my own characters and uh, i also talk to them i i love them i hate them i admire them Then That's it. I I have to talk to you about your book, but I I still have one question which comes to my mind. If I start writing poems, okay, mm -hmm. I feel or many of us we feel now we have that mood. Hota hai tab. I say poetry. I say nahi aari yar. Under se we need that mood. So how do you get doused in poems so easily, or you can get connected to poems? How do you do that? Uh, Avni, see, uh, uh. there are quite a few things although i would like to you know limit those things but i would like my message to be conveyed so first of all there is no such thing as mood okay for writing a poem every person has some or the other talent in him okay it might be anything first of all so natural abilities and natural talents are like Mm, what do we call uh, like natural uh, plants they need pruning okay mm -hmm. they need pruning and this pruning is what this is practicing okay so uh, if there is uh, some person who is you know beginning to write he has started writing it will often happen that in his second or third or fourth piece of writing whether it is a poem or a story or anything he will feel that there is a there is a you know uh, blank or there is something empty which he cannot fill you you call it mood ki mood nahi hai you call it the lack of words you call it the lack of themes to write on this thing will happen but once you persist and once you you know uh, are not ready to uh, get defeated by this you just carry on there will be a time when words will start dancing before you themes will start dancing before you and then you will enjoy that dance so persistence persistence is the key absolutely yes. this is so inspiring so with this uh, i would like to continue to where uh, we want to come and what everyone wants to listen to is how did war heroes and other observations came to life how did it come to life what did uh, what was it where was that point when you felt ki i have to script down uh, my poems into a book and what is it about yes sure avni uh, first of all uh, many of uh, the readers and uh, friends uh, might not know that this is my first book on poetry uh, although uh, i have got 11 books on my name but all of those are academic uh, this is my first book on poetry so uh, the idea of this book came around 5 uh, years ago okay uh, this is not an, a new idea actually i was uh, uh, listening to news on uh, my mobile phone i do not watch tv and uh, there was uh, uh, an incident that i would not like to mention uh, to remain politically correct uh, a lot of uh, soldiers died okay 
and then uh, my poetic mind uh, you know th there was this line which came to my mind ki uh, first they create war and then they create war heroes okay so war heroes is now a cliche kind of thing because we we uh, we only consider army people to be brave and uh, for the motherland they can do anything this this might be right this is right actually but my poetic mind i might be wrong because you know i have the right to be wrong that without the war there will be no war hero okay so this war is actually being created and this is not created for the last 4 or 5 years this has been the trend okay hmm. whenever the governments whenever the people wanted uh, to you know persuade people yeah. they created wars and this line first they create war and then they create war heroes it you know had been struck to my mind for the 5 or 6 years mm -hmm. and one day when i was you know uh, sitting in my ruminations and i was thinking about writing something it came to me that uh, i should do something with this line so then came the first poem war heroes and uh, uh, after that because i i started seeing war heroes to be common people okay we have to think about them as common people because by considering them war heroes always we are actually expecting them to be uh, sacrificing everything okay they do have a, they do have a life mm -hmm. the only life only one life that they know of because marne ke baad kya hoga we don't know yes. so they do have the right to be common oh. every time we need not remind them that you are war heroes so by this uh, phrase common man it came to me that they are the, not the only ones who are struggling who are who are you know um, uh, deprived of the glory uh, the yeah. real glory they need to have so then it came to me that there are a lot of incidents happening around me whether it is a the case of mason whether it is a case of a, 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 a shoe maker all the poems are there so yeah. these are common people which have been considered common but they have their stories to tell so yeah. i started writing about them and 50 poems came out and i got a book now incredible thank you so because we are talking about the poems i would also like to ask you now as an author as someone belonging to the literary world what does this literary success appear to you as of now uh, uh avni uh, first of uh, all uh, i would like to answer this in uh, at two levels okay first of all i do not feel uh, successful a successful man only if i will be selling a lot of books okay mm -hmm. only if i'll be famous as a poet i'll not be considering myself successful mm -hmm. true success uh, for any poet for any writer that for that matter should be whether he has been able to touch the lives of people who are his readers mm -hmm. okay so for me to i'll consider myself successful if uh my reader even 1% of them get what i am trying to tell them okay so i'll consider myself successful that's it that's the definition of success for me because i am staying um, um at a town which is not a city actually and the government is paying us enough so i you know do not aspire to uh, earn a lot of money all i need is Such a thoughtful and beautiful thing. I am listening to you, uh, li listening from you. I I can't tell you because uh, before interviewing you, I was telling. I want to tell this to the audience. I was honestly petrified when I read um, your introduction. Uh, when I um, read about your journey, that you are an English, you are an English teacher, and you are a voracious reader and everything. I was all petrified. How would I interview this person? He would be this, that, ye, wo. But now when I'm talking to you, this is like this is one of the best interviews I have ever had because this is so easy communicating with you. And I guess if a poet or a writer is 
so much easy and beautiful with his thought it it goes easy for the reader to read him uh of course uh, although uh, uh, to be very honest uh, uh, my friends and some of the um, reviewers that i've got they yeah. uh, tell me that uh, many of my poems are a little difficult to read but although although many of them are easy to but uh, it is a question of uh, you know uh, who is reading mm -hmm. in the same manner uh, when we are talking uh, we 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 get prejudices we 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 get uh, you know uh, sometimes we think about people I that it will be usually have preconceived notions like i would have a honest review thing with you before reading the poem foundation i had this in my mind ki uh, i have to read his poem his poem would be so difficult to uh, pronounce to dictate to narrate when i started reading it for myself i understood it's a storytelling the trembling hand and everything it was so beautifully put that it is easy to read and it is easy to understand as well yes you have to dive a little deeper a little deeper i guess you have to dive little thoughtfully because it is very yes. thoughtfully put. that too that too that too yeah yeah so and and like and, uh, and there's one more thing uh, i have been really inspired by the poetry of ts eliot and uh, he was a modernist poet and uh, some of um, our readers might know about him he has written a poem the wasteland and uh, uh, there is a there is an irony about that poem uh, when he wrote that poem in 1921 nobody was able to understand this poem okay and in in december of 1921 he gave notes to understand that poem and in 1922 he got the nobel prize of literature so oh, wow. this is how this is how thing work because you know uh, the life itself is complex Correct. so if if you are writing very simple poem it simply means that you are not following life you you are not doing something right so poetry uh, can be simple it is true but it can also be difficult this is also true very true and with that uh, first of all i and the team of story scapers would like to congratulate for your first debut book which is so beautifully put i i can't stop reading i have to read that poem again because i love the um, first few lines of it and uh, with that i would also like to ask you do you uh, read the reviews that come for your books and uh, how do you feel after that how do you grasp that oh oh i am hungry for them actually i i love to i love to know what people think of my poems actually uh, yeah. whatever i say about ki mujhe farak nahi padta and things like that but farak to padta hai actually that's a policy so uh, i should know what people are thinking about my poems uh, and uh, it gives me you know a lot of things uh, first of all it tells me uh, ki uh, i'm going right direction or not yeah. secondly it tells me uh, uh, whether i'm right or wrong whether i'm right or wrong not in the matter of content mm -hmm. because content so uh, whatever comes to my mind i'll write okay mm -hmm. i don't have any kind of fear of anybody because i uh, whatever i think i will write that is true mm -hmm. but right or wrong in the sense if i am not able to convey what i was trying to say it means there is something uh, sort of a problem that i need to address so this is what i mean by right or wrong okay yeah. and uh, yeah. then then there is a uh, this thing that uh, it is not always possible for you to uh, convey what you were actually trying to say um because of the nuances of the language itself because of uh, the misinterpretation uh, because of uh, how language works it is not always possible you know to convey what you what you were trying to say and we have a hell lot of theories on this we start from new criticism to deconstruction in literature regarding uh, uh, what a writer writes and what a reader reads so uh, in deconstruction there is a theory 
there is a critic Rola Bart who says that author is dead. The author is dead means uh, uh, you cannot be an author. Once, once, you, once you write a book and it publishes, you are dead because you cannot convey what you were trying to say. Every reader will read the poem and interpret it in his or her own way. But still, reviews are important. They tell us the way. So do the reviews encourage you or you sometimes feel disappointed with them? How does it go? See, well, this is a natural human tendency that when we hear something negative about us, we feel bad. But as a poet, as a writer, or as a public figure, I, I would not call, call myself public figure in the sense that actors or, uh, uh, you know, uh, but if your book is in public domain, you are a public figure, whether you are famous or not. So being a public figure, we have to think it very carefully that negativity, criticism is a must. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you should, you should be able to take it very positive. Yes, because all, all, all positivity makes us boring. Means uh, if everybody is praising me, no, I like praise. True, that's true. I, I like praise. Really yeah, yeah. I like praise to that. Uh, I will, I will tell you, na. But everybody is praising me. I, how will I improve? How will I know what should I write and what should I know write? Yeah, that is the okay. thing. And then what's that like? Uh, because many aspiring authors, writers are watching you currently. What is that uh, one thing or a top advice that you would like to give to our uh, writers if they are planning to write and publish their poetry book or their novel very soon? Um, first of all, I would tell them not to be in a hurry. Okay. Jaldbaji nahi. Because what we do actually, uh, the, the fame thing is so attractive, and especially in the youth these days, in the time of Insta and everything, that everybody thinks that uh, if I can jot down five words, uh, I can be a poet. I'm not criticizing or underestimating anybody's worth, mm -hmm. but you should read a lot, first of all. Okay, if you're not reading, and you're trying to write something, it can be either immature, inappropriate, or anything out of the hundred hellish things. So you should read first and you should keep writing. Get your poems to publish in forums like story scrapers or uh, uh, other okay. magazines and uh, see how or what kind of impact your poems are making on others and when you feel like that, that you have enough of it you can then plan about you know getting your book published otherwise don't be in a hurry because once a book is written it is recorded it is a part of a recorded history and when at, at some day at some day when you'll be uh, you'll be a great poet or something like that you will be reading that book and you will be a kind of, of yeah you will be regretting you will be regretting that uh, why did i write this poem or these poems for that matter so don't be in a hurry first you know read and then get yourself published in magazines uh, platforms like story scrapers and other uh, platforms and then decide is there uh, this the right time uh, to be a published author that at least that's what I did because I've been writing poems since 1999. So it's been around 25 years. Yeah. After 25 years, I, I decided to get published as a poet. Although uh, the first academic book that I wrote, it was in 2008. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was for um, an exam called uh, RPSC second grade English teacher. Okay. So academic books uh, is an altogether different arena. Okay, because they are only only knowledge matters. But in the world of poetry, knowledge is not even secondary. Correct. So that's if there is something far this, is, this advises, I believe, as such um, profound things because usually in the uh, 
वॉट टू से इन द अर्ज ऑफ बींग इन द लाइम लाइट एंड जैसे आपने कहा कि नहीं सक्सेस चाहिए सो पीपल जस्ट राइट डाउन बुक्स एंड जस्ट मेस अप थिंग बट वॉट यू सेड इज वेरी अप्रोप्रिएट दैट टेक योर ओन टाइम बी इन योर ओन टेस्ट एंड कीप राइटिंग एंड रीडिंग Yes, of course. Yeah, and so with because, that, uh, because because we have you with us, and we are discussing about your precious book. Uh, tell us what is your favorite poem from the book, and could you please read a few lines of your poem for us? Uh, Avni, uh, there is a very sweet coincidence that uh, uh, my favorite poem is also Foundations. Okay, oh. the poem that that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. so uh i would like to read a few lines from uh, the poem and there is one more thing um, uh, there is one unpublished poem of mine that i'm working on it's going to be around 1000 line poem and uh, it's uh, it's an ode to the poet i i i, I love most i'll be reading this poem okay but first i would uh, be reading the foundations yeah <clears throat> okay so it's a very short poem as you've seen it is very very impactful and, uh, and pardon me for my reciting of the poem because this is for the first time that i'm doing this uh, so please do all your for you um i i'll learn i learn with the time so uh, the, the poem title is foundations uh, hands that shape your life now shake and strain against the mortar each brick a weight unknown the mason's sharp eyes track his weakened frame and with each trembling heave the old man's fear has grown years carved in wrinkles calluses deep and wide tell tales of strength the body now denies he was a cornerstone where walls took sturdy spot now clumsy feet betray him pride a withered shoot he longs to toss the trowel find a shadowed space but hunger gnaws more brutal than disgrace each coin clutched tight a desperate fading shame his worth now counted out in dwindling borrowed time the house is rise indifferent to his play the mason's patience thinning all to clear to see soon a younger pair of hands will claim this spot he reads the verdict on the wall his purpose now forgot thank you so I have, this like i have i am a fan of this poem particularly and i loved the end as much as i loved the beginning i loved the end a poem should be a complete whole that is that is why uh, this is a good poem i mean this yeah. should be considered a good poem i'm not saying this is a good poem every poem which is a, a good poem should have a you know a beginning a middle and end yes. because you cannot judge a poem arts you have put very aptly yes thank you thank you very much all uh, thanks to you because uh, you have taken out time for us and our writers and our audience and we are so glad we could have you and as much as i am feeling inspired talking to you i am sure our listeners the audience must be feeling very happy and inspired with this session because i guess writers as a bowling and a key someone is a poet someone is a writer 
so there is a pressure building up with people ki writers are so complicated so um, uh, i don't know but th- that's in the head and now when i am talking to you i can like very easily say no even if we write like you said poems can be difficult we write difficult we write easy but then it's so easy conversing with poets and writers and it's it's just it goes with the flow like poems that should it uh, that should how it be i mean I'm, that's how it should be uh, yeah. because a poet is a human too correct <laughs> and that i would also request our audience to get the book war heroes and observations and uh, get impressed by the writing of mr mukesh sharma and yes. thank you all for joining us yes mukesh ji please yeah i mean i mean thank you very much for having me here and uh, the poem that i read to you and the poem i promised to read uh, okay. is still remaining i just missed uh, it yeah yeah please yeah let, let, us, let, us, let us beautify the show by ending it with a beautiful poem see uh, it came to me because you were saying poets can be difficult poets can be easy yeah. okay so what i'm trying to tell you by reciting this poem which is not yet published that even yeah. if the language of the poem the the words which are used in the poem are easy sometimes it happens that poem can be difficult in spite of these things so the poem that i'm going to read now now uh, i cannot read it fully because it is around 1000 lines i will read some lines like 10 or 20 lines you will see that the lines are very easy you will understand but the the thing that is going on there you will have to think about it i just have to take my oldest diary Oh wow because i do not believe in uh, typing first on laptop oh, same I, here even i do believe in scribbling it first in my diary and i yes. most of us like we are uh, writers are old school people yes yes i mean we should learn technology that is right but uh, uh, technology cannot <laughs> be feel jo hai na wo i guess wo diary mein likhne ke baad wo feel aata hai and then we can surely go to the technology yes first we write and then we can copy it yeah so uh, i'll it's a few line okay i uh, then uh, what will you say okay uh, this poem is uh, is going to be titled as a love song for the wasteland okay mm-hmm. so the wasteland the poem that i told you about um i so much love it that i'm going to write a in, entire poem 1000 line poem on the uh, poem itself okay so april is the cruelest oh i forget a lot these days i want to write a poem like the wasteland it is great my old time goat actually but i can't use april is the cruelest month copyright issues you know so i have to devise something of my own something new he said good poets steal and bad poets create this is now a dilemma to be a good or bad poet i have to burn this laptop of yours son you forget even to eat when you play with it i haven't yet told her that i forget a lot these days maybe some meditation or yoga helps me get back yesterday only was a yoga charya sued for selling covid pills so this is how it go it is going to be it is a very long poem it will not end so now with this initial with this initial lines you have left us with the dilemma should we be a good poet or a bad poet bad poet yeah and uh, this is what we call meta narrative a poem talking about itself okay this is a poem which is self conscious because it is telling about telling us about the process of writing Yeah, so yeah. this is this is a poem which is self-conscious, and we call it meta-narrative. 
okay and that's so a, like you said you have easily written it but it is difficult to understand because we have to very thoughtfully go through the words that you have written yes what i'm trying to say actually yes of course yeah no we are obliged that we could get to your such beautiful lines from you and thank you so much for making out time for us uh, a big thank you from team story scrappers and thank you to our dear audience for taking out time and watching us uh, we hope that you have enjoyed our session so keep writing with us keep reading with us and keep inspiring us so bye bye see you for the evening bye and thank you so much story scrappers for inviting me and lovely audience uh thank you very much and do read my poem war heroes sure. and other observations thank you bye bye thanks a lot thank you